Does memory speed really matter for the 7800X3D? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt and welcome back to Blackbird PC Tech and our next video in our Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Series. Our Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Series is focused on helping you make the tough choices when building your dream PC. Choices like, should I buy CPUX or CPUY? Should I buy GPUX or GPUY? Should I use an air cooler or AIO? These are all profound life-changing questions that we take very seriously here at Blackbird PC Tech. In this series, we are going to help you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC Octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus is DDR5 memory, specifically for AMD AM5 systems, with DDR5 6000 in the red corner taking on DDR5 8000 in the blue corner. Before we get started, I wanted to talk a little about my early experience with the AM5 platform. I built an all ASUS dream machine just after the launch of AM5 with the Ryzen 9 7950 and a 32 gig kit of DDR5 6000 Expo memory. Regardless of what I did, I simply couldn't get that memory kit to be stable. The system would randomly reboot, it wouldn't shut down, and it would take forever to boot up, but more about that later. When Jay released a video recently explaining why he switched back to Intel, I could certainly relate. The frustration I felt at the time was very similar. So I looked up the qualified vendor list or QVL for my Asus ROG Crosshair X670E Extreme motherboard, and I decided to try a kit of DDR5 6400 XMP memory from that list. Surprisingly, it worked flawlessly. All of the issues, except for the long boot time, suddenly disappeared. That was the fastest speed supported on AM5 systems at that time, and so I considered myself extremely lucky that it worked. Everything was running fine until a BIOS update decided to nerf my stability. I know what you will say. If everything is working fine, why did you update the BIOS? So you've got to remember, this was during the time when people were having issues with Ryzen 7000 CPUs burning due to high SO C voltages, damaging the CPU and motherboard socket. So to avoid this issue, the BIOS update was not optional, especially since my DDR5 6400 memory kit was running at a higher SOC voltage. After performing the update, I decided to try the original DDR5 6000 Expo kit again, and lo and behold, it worked. Apparently this or one of the earlier BIOS updates actually fixed the initial issues that I was having with my Expo kit. I lost a little bit of bandwidth, but the latency improved and I was finally able to run Expo. So I was happy with the result. Which brings me to today and this video. A few weeks ago, after I published a video on the impact of memory speed for DDR5 Intel-based systems, multiple people asked me if the results are similar for AMD AM5 systems. The truth is, I didn't even consider running such high memory speeds on AM5, given my early experience with DDR5 stability on the platform and the lack of availability of any high-speed Expo kits. However, in July of 2023, AMD quietly released a GSA 1007 B, which provided a massive speed boost for Ryzen 7000 systems with up to 8200 supported on four DIMM motherboards. If you watch my Intel video, you would know that these type of high speeds, 7800 plus, are simply not stable on four DIMM Z790 boards, so it's really impressive if they work on AM5 systems. AMD would have managed to stabilize high speed DDR5 memory kits with a firmware update, something Intel has been unable to accomplish on Z790 motherboards. Which brings us to the primary question for this video. Does speed actually make a meaningful difference to performance for the AM5 platform and in particular the 7800X3D? In this video we are going to find out. As mentioned earlier the battle today is between two memory kits with G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB DDR5 6000 CL30 in the red corner taking on Team Group T-Force Delta RGB DDR5 8000 CL38 in the blue corner. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my AMD based open bench table with the following components. For the CPU, we have an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D. For the motherboard, we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For the GPU, we have a Sapphire Nitro Plus Radeon RX 7900XDX VaporX. For storage, we have two 2 terabyte WD Black SN850X NVMe SSDs. For the CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. And for the PSU, we have a Gigabyte GP AP 1200 PM 1200 watt platinum power supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with Expo and XMP settings with no further BIOS optimization, such as increasing the Infinity Fabric frequency, reducing timings, or increasing voltage. This was done intentionally to better represent what most PC builders would do when overclocking their memory. Set Expo or XMP and forget the rest. Optimizing BIOS, optimizing fan profiles, overclocking the CPU will likely 
result in higher FPS, but is not representative of what a typical user will do. For the high speed memory kit to boot and run stable, it is important that you are running the latest BIOS that includes a GSA 1007B or later. For the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master motherboard, I also had to enable XMP Expo high bandwidth support in BIOS. Other motherboard manufacturers should have a similar option that you can select. I would also recommend clearing CMOS before trying to run high speed memory. It's always safer to start from default BIOS settings. With the memory kits ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. But before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now it's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy! In the blue corner, we have the champion! In the red corner, we have the challenger! Who will win this battle royale? Stay tuned to find out! Remember how I mentioned the long boot times with AM5 systems? If you explore this issue online, you will get inundated with complaints about this issue. Some systems can take up to six minutes to boot, which is a very long time to wait. It appears that this extended boot time is due to memory training, where the PC is essentially retraining the memory every time it boots. The funny thing is for me, I only notice this on my 7950X systems and not my 7800X3D systems. Even with the latest BIOS updates, my boot time for my primary 7950X system is around four minutes, which is extremely annoying. After exploring this issue further, I discovered a very simple fix. The solution is to enable memory context restore in BIOS. In most systems, this is set to auto by default, which apparently means it's disabled. So your system retrains the memory every single time you boot. As soon as I enabled this feature, my boot times went from around four minutes to maybe five to 10 seconds. So if you have this issue, I would strongly encourage you to try this fix. One caution, however, is that if you your memory is even slightly unstable and you enable this feature, you will likely start seeing memory instability issues more frequently. So before you enable memory context restore, I highly recommend that you make sure your memory is stable. You can do this by running software such as Memtest 86 Plus or Kahu, two of my favorite programs for testing memory stability. I will place a link for each in the video description below. Hopefully with this fix, you will no longer be dreading rebooting a system like I was. In this video, we pitted two DDR our five memory kits against each other in the PC Octagon to see who will emerge victorious. With the G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB DDR5 6000 CL30 kit in the red corner, taking on the Team Group T-Force Delta RGB DDR5 8000 CL38 kit in the blue corner. As you can see by the round by round results, it was a decisive victory for Team Blue with 13 wins, five draws and four losses across 22 hard fought rounds of battle. Given how close the average gaming performance was, however, it's tough to recommend one kit over the other based purely on performance, since the margins are not meaningfully different. Since the performance is so close, what happens when we look at cost? The current price for both kits puts the DDR5 6000 kit at approximately half the cost of the DDR5 8000 kit. If you convert that into gaming efficiency, or frames per second per dollar, then the DDR5 6000 kit provides a knockout blow by offering approximately 100% better bang for your buck in gaming across 14 titles. I am not sure how anyone could recommend the higher speed 8000 kit at such a large 
large price premium, even considering the small edge that it has in performance. Perhaps this, along with Infinity Fabric Challenges with higher speed memory, is the reason why memory manufacturers have not produced high speed expo kits to date. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes as other components battle it out in the PC Octagon. Please also comment and offer suggestions on any future components that you would like to see go head to head. Bye for now.